Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. <coughs> uh, today's video is going to be all about um, my car boot sale finds from this weekend. Um, we're halfway through bank holiday weekend, but as you can see, I've had a good buying weekend. So, it covers absolutely everything, some antiques, uh, some jewellery, uh, some modern collectibles and some pieces to go back out on a car boot sale and even for me in my, own, in my own garden. So what I'll do as normal, I'll um, scan over the pieces, giving you a little brief description of what they are, what I've paid and what I think they're worth. Um, it's a really good variety today. Um, so hopefully you'll, uh, you'll enjoy seeing. Okay, I'm going to start with the largest piece so I can get it off the table and have a bit of room to work. Here we have a child's cast iron garden bench. Um, it is really, really pleasant looking piece. has all the uh, animals along the back panel. The back panel again is cast iron. Almost a representation of Noah's Ark with all the different animals, the elephant, the lion, the giraffe and so forth. Um, has a little bit of damage. As you can see here, this uh, back piece here is broken. However, it's nothing to take this bit of batten off and replace that piece of batten. Um, other than that, the bench is in really good condition. It's a lovely little thing. Uh, it cost me three pounds. Now I'm going to try and retail it tomorrow uh, for 15 or 20 pounds as it is. If I have to repair it, I'll probably put it in my own garden. So guys, we'll move on now, now the bench has been moved. Um, I'll start here with a piece of English silver plate. It's 20th century, um, it has ball and claw feet, quite pleasant. Fully uh, stamped up. Now, the most collectible of these are in solid silver, obviously. Um, this is a silver plate example, nicely uh, etched. Um, where I tend to sell those pieces to is like wedding planners and things like that because they're perfect for little um, gift cards or um, cards to say you've called, like calling cards and things. So that's the type of place they normally go. I have to excuse the cut of my finger and the stamp is from the boot sale this morning. We come across then to a nice pair of solid brass cannons. Uh, this one here is Georgia V, uh, has the uh, GR cipher on there. They are nice. This one here is a more modern example. It's really nice, heavy brass. These always end up selling well on a gentleman's desk. It doesn't have a lot of age, it's probably uh, in the last 20 or 30 years. Could even be soon, uh, you know, later than that. However, they're very decorative. Uh, they come in this morning off a dealer friend of mine in Cardiff for three pound each. Now I know comfortably I'm going to get between twenty and twenty-five each for these brass cannons. Never struggled to sell a brass cannon. We come across then to a large horse and cart. Now. These are a stable seller of mine. I have at least three, four, five a year. They're very heavy. They're normally three or four kilos in brass. Um, probably 1920s. In lovely condition. Uh, no damage on it. Little dent there, I suppose, where it's pushed in. But there's no breaks at all. That came in off another dealer who was clearing from an auction house. And that cost me a fiver. There's nearly three kilos of brass. It's over seven pound in scrap. So you can't really lose. It's, it's just good business. It's gonna go no matter what, it's going out. Next then we have some little brass miner's lamps. Now these lamps are probably uh, made in the shop. However, you can buy the some that are made during the 1980s miner's strike where people used to make little lamps not to sell for revenue while they were out of work. There's a lot of um, these safety lamps about. Um, they're very heavy. They're 
solid brass. This one's probably half a kilo on its own. And then obviously graduating down. Now I paid £3 for the four lamps this morning. Now quite comfortably, I could get £3 each for the small ones, um, 4 or 5 for the middle, and then about £8 for the large. But I'm going to put them out tomorrow as a group for about £20-£22. But they are quite collectible, and certainly in the part of Wales I come from, there's a lot of coal miners, or ex-miners, and they'd love to have them on display. We'll come across then to another stable of mine, which is... Swarovski crystal. Here we have a little crystal cat with a metal tail. Now it cost me three pounds. It's not the first one I've had. I've had a few of these. Um, it's got the swan stamp. As I've told you in previous videos, there's two stamps you need to look for. Uh, you have the swan stamp or you have the block stamp. The block stamp being the earlier. I have the swan stamp. However, still a collectible cat. I put that out the way. I bought uh, two separate watches. Um, a nice, just a smart watch um, with an elasticated strap. That was a pound. That's going back out on the market tomorrow for probably a five or ten pounds. Here we have a more collectible watch, which is a Swatch. Can I get it to focus? Yes. There you go, Swatch down the bottom there. And it's a go in. So again, maybe 10 or 15 pounds. I haven't looked yet. Um, it's plain white, unfortunately, rather than patterned. I would have liked the pattern on there. But I'm not going to complain. I'm more than happy. Again, it was a you know, pound of watches, neither here nor there. Next, we have a lovely serving set. Um, this is all beautifully etched silver plate. And again, followed through on here. Now the handles are not hallmarked, however, they look silver. Um, I will acid test them, but the quality of the piece and the quality of the um, handles suggest to me they are silver. Now they come in, they cost me £2.50. Now one of the reasons is, if you look here, you can see the handle is separated slightly from the body of the blade. Now I'm going to do a video this week showing you how to reset them without doing any damage whatsoever. It's the easiest thing in the world. I'll reset that for you on a video and you'll be able to uh, see how to do that yourselves. Therefore then you sell it as a perfect piece, no damage. So over the moon with those. Um, couldn't be happier to be totally honest with you. I'm hoping they're silver. So if I move them aside. Next we have a pair of mid-19th century flashed etched glasses. Um, they have a bladed nope, nice ruby etch, uh, flash into them. Uh, they're hand blown. Oh, there you go, that's what I paid. I don't think I paid that, I think I paid a pound each. They have a snapped pontal, which is a sharp pontal mark. I've done a video telling you what to look for on old drinking glasses. You just saw there they had them up for three pound each. I think I paid a pound, uh, three pound a pair, and I think I paid a pound each. Um, now these glasses, I get between twelve and eighteen pounds. I'll ask eighteen. Sometimes they'll go for eighteen. Sometimes they'll go for twelve. Drinking glasses are a very good stable for me. Now I've told you in another video how to identify your early drinking glasses. So take if you haven't seen that one, take a look at that one, guys. It's a good film to watch. Next, then we have a beautiful cranberry uh, glass ruffled bowl. You, I'm holding it up against the wall there so you can see the colour. It's totally different to the modern cranberry. The modern cranberry is such a deeper, darker red. This is almost a pink red. This is a Victorian bowl, a uh, clear foot. The foot has the uh, pontal mark and you can see all the striations there as I'm turning it. Um, all the imperfections in the bowl. It's absolutely, it's a stunning bowl. Um, could be for little bonbons, sweet dish, anything. Um, it came in this morning, it was a pound in Sully Car Boot Sale in Cardiff. Now a piece like this, a few years ago, would have been 35, 40 pound, no problem. But now you're looking 20 to 25. Still, very good uh, profit. <clears throat> we'll come across then to a little bit of Indian art. Now we have another ivory panel, hand painted with 
a scene of horses possibly looks like they're playing some sort of game not a hundred percent I'm gonna take it out and have a good look on dry glass but it's all hand painted the ivory's got all the cross hatching that you look for in ivory and of course you have an inlaid frame um, now I did buy ivory panel uh, painted with nudes some time ago that I was going to keep in my collection however um, another dealer come across who liked it and made me an offer I couldn't refuse next piece we have a wine cooler now lovely item but unfortunately the people who sold it to me yesterday in Splot cleaned it to take it and they've scratched it to bloody hell I'm hoping I can buff a lot of this marks out now I'm going to do a video to show you how to clean silver plate without doing this scratching that they've done you can see it all down here now you do that by using the wadding the brass or the silver wadding it scratches your silver don't use it I'll do a video this week showing you how to clean silver without doing this scratching um, however it's still a really nice piece it's a lovely uh, design to a lovely shape fully stamped up there you go and it, apart from the scratching that they've done on it it would have been mint condition it'll still sell it come in um, £3.50 which is really for nothing it's going to go out £25-£30 anyway next we have a job lot of cutlery. Now I've told you uh, in the past on a video I talked about buying scrap uh, to car boot sales. Now these forks are all brass. Even though they're EPNS, EPNS is on brass. But I do very well with old cutlery. Um, you can't buy these old knives anymore. They're really good. You sharpen them up, they come up like a razor blade. Um, and modern cutlery today is expensive. So I'll break this down now into little groups and I'll say £2 for a group day and £2 for a group day and £2 and so on and anything that's not good enough goes in my scrap box. This box of cutlery cost me a fiver and there's a f quite a few kilos in here of brass. Obviously these are not brass, these are steel and simulated bone handles. But there's enough of the cutlery in here to sell on. I'll probably get £10 or £15 for the pieces I can set up. And then there's probably going to be a half a kilo to a kilo to go in my scrap box towards Christmas. Um, next we have, well, it's a Staffordshire Luster horse, rearing horse. It's in um, a brown or copper luster. It's really nice quality actually. A lot better than you'd think. Now it has a registration number underneath, I don't know if you can make it out here, that dates it to 1910. I would have liked to pay, but I don't know the maker, uh, so I'm just going to put it down to Staffordshire, which is more where most of this stuff come from anyway, but it could be a number of factories up in that area. Uh, date wise is around 1910 so that's no problem and it's got this lovely beautiful copper luster there's a little bit of way to the luster on the knees uh, no chips and no cracks which is quite unusual this come in a pound in Gethley Gay today what more can you ask for it's top of my head it's going to be about 30 pounds um, without doing research could end up a little bit lower, could end up a bit higher. Either way, I'm very happy. Then we have a pair of barley twist candlesticks. These are not the best examples in the world. They're probably 1950s with the chrome tops. However, the, the 50s through to 60s, 70s is really making a comeback. But I've done a video on candlesticks. Um, where I talk to you about how I buy candlesticks I put them away and I save them up all year and then come Christmas time I have a big spurge on candlesticks now they are quite nice you can see the uh, oak barley twist there and with a nice wax and a clean these will shine up lovely they come in for a pound for the pair 
and they're going to go out Christmas time, £20, no problem. But the ones you're really looking for, you see this barley twist here, is an open, well, what's known as an open barley twist. There's two stems coming down that spiral in amongst each other, but they're not solid. There's a gap between them. They can pull 50 to £100 pound a pair. They're the ones you're looking for, guys. Next, we have a single reproduction Staffordshire dog. Now, it's a reproduction. These were made uh, in the Victorian era, and they were called flatbacks because they didn't decorate the back, and they were always flat to go up against the mantle and things. Now, this piece was produced by Roald Dalton. There you go. They done them in various sizes. Uh, this is a small. Um, but again, a pound. So who cares what size it is. For a Roald Dalton uh, reproduction Staffordshire dog, happy days. Don't sell for fortunes, but it's okay. Next then, we have some grogs. Now, a dealer friend of mine went to the, got to the table slightly before me and she picked up this one. Keep Wales tidy, throw your litter in England. Love it. And what she do, she turned it up and she saw nothing. So she put it back down and she walked away. However, what she should have done is turn it around. John Hughes, Wales, from the grog shop. But she was very unlucky. If she'd picked up this example, this one is actually signed on the underneath. So, grogs, they do all the, um, the rugby players and things like that and all the Welsh, Welsh pieces. And a grog now can pull a couple of hundred pounds depending on who the player is and when it was done. They made literally five miles down the road from me in Pont de Preth. Um, love the Keep Wales Tidy one, that is so cool. Um, they were a pound each. Um, as I said, it was a dealer friend of mine picked it up and she made the mistake. So you're not just looking for the Grogs signature, guys. You're looking for John Hughes of Wales because he works in the Grogs. Um, but there's a variety of these sheep. I, if I was you, I'd have a little look on eBay. Get yourself familiar with them because they do pull money, as do the Grogs um, rugby players. Coming towards the end slowly. But what we have here is a really nice solid brass desk set. It doesn't have a huge amount of age, um, but it is very decorative. It came in this morning, it was £1.50. Why is it £1.50? Because this one is come off. It's not damaged, the solder has literally just come away. I was trained in college in Astromanach as a plumber, so I can resolder that on, no problem whatsoever. And that's going to go out 15, 20 pound, and it'll be gone the same day. More than happy there. Here we have a nice um, job lot of jewellery. I'll start off here. Uh, we have a solid silver locket which has been set with a diamond in the center. We'll open up and you can put obviously your photographs in there. Nice to have the diamond. We have a variety of silver bracelets and chains. This one here, particularly nice, it has the uh, it has the locket and quite a nice thick chain. Um, and then we have a variety of, you know, smalls. You have the letter N as a pendant. A couple of uh, simple pendants and chains. And again, another pendant. And we have well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 rings, all varying. Um, as you can see, some of them are absolutely beautiful. All cubic zirconia in a heart shape. You have a large black stone. Uh, no idea what the stone is. I'll have to have a look. 
again cubic zirconia there's some really nice pretty rings here here we have a nine karat gold uh, bracelet set with what looks like periot or peridot that's uh, six grams on his own uh, a couple of earrings which go with that uh, to make the set and another ring a couple of bits of these are scrap that's you can see that's dead um, I could probably straighten it with my ring gauge um, and sell it on it'll depend silver is 30 40 pence a gram it's neither here nor there um, I can straighten him out or make him round again and chuck it out for a fiver or I can put it in my scrap box easy either way I'm happy with the little hoard of jewelry there it hasn't come in for a lot um, I'd say that entire job lot of silver and gold they cost me 30 pounds okay guys next we have the um, little silver plated nursery cup it uh, has a rhyme on the front little bow peep and obviously the etched design of little bow peep and her sheep on the sides beautiful little nursery cup 1920s, 1930s, Westminster plate. It's a little dented and that around the rim. Um, a little stained on the inside, as you'd expect. Um, but people do collect these old nursery pieces. They love the history that goes with them, the fact that the children played with them and things. Really nice little cup. It's going to go 15, 20 pound, no problem whatsoever again. Next then we have three decanters or bottles. Now, you have two 19th century examples, uh, beautifully cut, two contrasting examples. This one here is a little later, um, beautiful strawberry diamond cut in. Uh, it has been, by the looks of it, polished down on the neck. This neck should have been flayed out like this one here, in my opinion, uh, so it's probably lost a good half an inch off the neck. Still a beautiful little decanter. Original stopper. This one here doesn't have a stopper but it's an early decanter. It's probably 1810, 1820s. Um, quite nicely cut. Three neck rings all beautifully cut. Sliced down the um, ribbon down the uh, bottom of the bo uh, body. And of course we have the modern crystal decanter which is produced by Stuart Crystal again beautifully cut all over original stopper these bottles all come in at a pound each this morning at the car boot sale you can't really ask for more they're gonna go out again 20 pound a bottle no problem whatsoever um, and to be totally honest with this one here if I had the stopper would have been more 45 Finally then guys, what we have here is a set of London made bowls. These are a match set. They are, as I say, they are a match set. They've got the, um, the seals on them. I think the last date they had, if I can find it. One of them. Let me see if. I'm not sure which one got them. They might have all had it. But the last date I could find them stamped for was 1983 or 85. Oh, there you go. 1986. So they are match balls. They were used in 65, used again in 86. They're a London make. Taylor, Taylors of London, and there's a set of four of these, and there's the other two, and the carry bag, which is a really nice quality bag, I paid a tenner for the set guys, now a real nice vintage set, um, the Ligman Vita, which is a type, the type of wood they are, inlaid with uh, I would say ivory, but it's not ivory. It's uh, almost like a simulated ivory. Um, set of four. 
you go to a shop and buy a set of four bowls now uh, of that quality with the bag you're talking probably a couple of hundred pound so they're going to go out and I would think I'm going to get a tenner a bowl from no problem at all and I'll throw in the bag so I'll probably get 40 quid for that set I was considering buying it for the kids for when I go over the bowls club for meals because um, they do beautiful meals over in our bowls club however they weren't really interested in the bowling so I'll move them on but that is pretty much the uh, the week's buying. Not a bad little haul for uh, two days work guys. Um, obviously I've still got tomorrow to go. I haven't decided what to do yet. The weather is atrocious. Um, there's always Cardiff. Cardiff is on rain or shine in Bessemer. You've got to give it to Andy. He's religious. He's there twice a week without fail no matter what. Um, which is good because customers know the boot sale is always open. There's never any question is it going to be on. So I may sell in Bessemer tomorrow or I may just take the day off because the weather is that bad. I'll decide um, in the morning. As you can see, I have more than bought enough um, stock for this week. Um, it's a shame to waste a bank holiday Monday, but I can't believe the bloody weather we're having. Sometimes it's just against you. Um, obviously, not stock-wise, I can't mourn one bit about the stock. Um, and we'll see how the rest of the week pans out. There's always other options. There's antique centres, there's charity shops. There's plenty of options to go buy in. Not that I need to. So guys, I hope you've um, enjoyed taking a look at uh, this week's haul. Um, I've enjoyed showing you. I love being out there digging it out and buying it. I miss some beautiful stuff as well. Um, so, I'll say thank you very much for watching then guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Till the next time, I'll say bye. Uh, you'll, don't forget to uh, subscribe. I'd appreciate a like and a share. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. You'll find us on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. And you'll, we have our own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Bye for now.